We are Sorted, a group of mates who have your back when it comes to all things food. From cooking battles to gadget reviews Man, it's not worth it. and cookbook challenges to a midweek meal packs app. Crack your eggs, bake. We uncover the tools that'll help us all cook and eat smarter. Join our community where everything we do starts with you. Happy New Year and welcome back to Sorted. Now to kick off 2021, we're going to review some more restaurant meal kits to see whether they're worth making at home. Reviewing the kits today will be Jamie, Mike and myself, all relatively normal home cooks, or as some of you guys have been putting out, amateur chefs. No. Wrong. What? I'm taking it. No. Not even close. That's called an oxymoron. You're a moron. Okay, Jay, you're up first. Lift the cloche. Didn't get a bigger cloche for Christmas, then. Nope. nope. There was no budget for cloche. <laughs> what have you seen? Is that, is that beef short rib? Now, Jay. Wait, never. Okay. Two. <laughs> <laughs> beef short rib. Well, Jay, what you have here is the Flank London Short Rib Shawarma Kit. The ultimate low and slow beef short rib kit from Flank. They're a nose to tail restaurant, so they literally use all of the animal. Uh, they source their animals really well, and the menu just looks incredible. That sounds like a treat. Okay, Spaff, where do we start? Step one is to cook my beef short ribs. They're going into an oven for five hours on a lined baking tray with tin foil over the top of them. I'm gonna put that into an oven, 120 degrees Celsius for five hours. That's so low, that's like someone blowing on it just to heat it up. <laughs> we'll see you in five hours. May I? Please. Oh, Whoa, I'm bugging can it. you? <laughs> Amateur chef. All right. Oh, I don't know what that is. Surely as an amateur chef, Barry, you'd be able to... All right, enough of this. Okay, so this is from Rolla Walla. Yeah, this is from Rolla Walla, and this is their Meatball Rogan Josh Naan Roll. So the kit includes everything you need for a four-person roller party in collaboration with Meatless Farms, which means that meatball isn't really a meatball. Okay, so we're having a roller party. Let's get started. Step one, everything needs to be prepped and put into ramekins. So we've got some lemons, homemade writer, julienne beetroot, coriander, pickled onion, thin sev, which is like, I know it from like part of the Bombay mix. Sev is a popular Indian snack um, made of chickpea flour. Then we've got some extras as well, which we've added to it. Mango, pomegranate, and some coconut. Next step's really simple. To roll out our meatballs. It's made up of pea, rice, and soya protein. Now they've rolled out into a pan for five to eight minutes to crisp up on the outside and warm through the middle. They're interesting me. These are clumping together really nicely. They're cooking really evenly. I'm enjoying these. Whilst they're cooking, I can get on the next step, which is reheating my Rogan Josh sauce in a pan with a splash of water. Balls are now out of the pan onto some kitchen paper. Uh, and then I've just got the bung manans into a searing hot oven. Balls go into the sauce and they're ready for service. It smells fantastic. Should I make you one? I think I made the balls a little bit too big, so I'm gonna cut them in half. My bad. Oh yeah. Let's get great to this go. Beetroot. Got some pomegranate going in there. And some coconut writer. A little bit of crunch on top. Oh, this does look pretty damn epic. Very nice. How good does that look? Let's have a Walla Walla party. Cheers. Cheers. That is fantastic. That's got every texture under the sun in that. Those sauces are very special. The meat substitute, those meatballs, have the texture of meat. And the texture, with all the additional flavours that are going on, you wouldn't be able to tell that that's not meat. We're all having a lovely time. How much do you think it costs to have this lovely time? I'm going to say, for the four wraps, I'm going to go in and say £32. It's £24.95. For me, £6 per portion for a home-cooked meal brought to you by a restaurant 
feels like a really good price point. Lift the cloche. Right, you're about to make something delicious, but I'm gonna warn you, it's gonna take a while. Okay. You have the Ultimate Hoppers Bundle DIY kit containing a collection of their favorite dishes. It's the go-to box if you're not sure what to order, bringing all the flavors to you in one go. And when they say all the flavors. <laughs> He's like Mary Poppins handbag. <laughs> <laughs> Sri Lankan, right? Yeah. Cool. This is awesome. I haven't eaten anything like this before, so I'm excited. Where are you going to start? So we're going to start off with our mutton rolls. They're going into a deep fryer, 180 degrees C, for about three to four minutes until they're golden brown. If you don't have a deep fat fryer, you can also do them in a pot of oil in a pan. And then served immediately with the SL Sri Lankan hot sauce. So I'll eat mine in a bit, but I'm going to crack on because there's so much to do. It's like a cross between a lamb samosa and a croquette. Yes. Is it delicious? It's absolutely delicious. It's got a real kick of cardamom. Ooh. Oh, I love cardamom. Oh, good Look palette. at you, amateur chef. Me. Dish number two, bone marrow varoval. And I'm heating the rasa in a large pan over a medium heat, adding a bit of water just to thin it, bring that up to a boil, then reduce to a simmer. In the meantime, I have a baking tray lined with tin foil and I'm placing my bone marrow, marrow side up, and I'm now just sprinkling a pinch of kalupo salt over each bone. Now these go into an oven, 200, for four minutes on the top shelf. So while the other stuff is cooking, I've got roti in a pan, um, I sprinkled it with water, 30 seconds on one side, flip it, 30 seconds on the other side, and then keep flipping it for about two minutes until they're nice and golden brown. Oh, boys, I'm gonna have to de-cardigan. Oh, well, hey! Here. Oof. Bone marrow time. Oh, yes. <laughs> wow. Oh. So now, bone marrow goes in to the rasa, and some of that delicious sauce is spooned over the top and I cook that out for another six to eight minutes. Everything's cooked, so the bone marrow and all the sauce goes into bowls. Uh, I'm gonna crush some of the roti um, to release some of the fibers, it says in the instructions, topped with some fried drumstick leaves for garnish. Let's eat it. Bone marrow, varuval, varuval, varuval. Cheers. 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 Oh my god. Whoa. That bone marrow has the texture of my dreams. Oh, I'll be honest, I know that that doesn't look appetizing, but that tastes insane. And then dipping the roti into it, which is flaky. It's like texture of croissant. But flat and crispy and a little charred as well on the outside. Next, calipole chicken. So I've got a tray with some water going into the oven. That's gonna heat up and steam the chicken as well as roasting it. Then the chicken goes onto a lime baking tray, skin side up. I've used the bone marrow tinfoil, so as not to waste it. Into the oven with the tray of water. After 40 minutes, I'm gonna increase the temperature to 200 and cook for another 15 minutes. Meanwhile, I have the curry sauce heating up in a pan. Chicken time, so. I then took it out and covered it in this amazing Kalupo butter, and it's gone back in for another five minutes. And now it should be ready to take out and leave to rest before we eat it. Ready, boys? Mm. Oh, look at that, everyone. Oh, that. that is a chicken. It smells incredible. And while it's resting, I'm going to move on to the lamb kotu dish or kotu. Again, sorry, comment below. <laughs> So I have heated up some oil. I've scrambled some eggs and I've put those on a separate plate because I'm gonna add them back into the dish at the end. So first thing I'm gonna do is fry off my sliced onions. I'm gonna to have to do this and read at the same time. I have to say, mate, a bit like the other two that we've reviewed today as well, there's a lot of packaging going on, isn't there? I don't think we can shirk around the issue that there's a lot of plastic packaging. Restaurants are still trying to remain profitable and open you know, plastic is another conversation, but it is an important conversation. And honestly, the only thing that we can do is keep this and reuse it. Yeah. Onions are translucent. So then in with shredded carrot and cabbage, 
So they've had a minute and now in with chopped roti. What? I know, cool, right? Going to season this to taste with salt and pepper and then adding the lamb curry with a splash of water. Heat goes up to high. That smells extreme, extremely <laughs> nice, but it smells extreme. Scrambled eggs go back in and then cook it out for a further three to four minutes. We can garnish it and we can eat it. I get really excited by this kind of food. Me too. Top with chopped coriander and the spring onions provided. And look at that. That, boys, is our lamb kotu. Cheers. Cheers. Wow. Oh. It's really spiced and it feels like it's going to get spicy and it sort of rises up and then just stops just at a pleasant point. It's absolutely stunning. Ooh, really nice chew from the roti as well, isn't there? Yeah. yeah. I'll come back to this because we'll move on. <laughs> There's more. How many more have we got to make? We got the colourful chicken. Sauce goes over the chicken. Oh, Phil. Garnished with some kalapul garnish. And that there is kalupol chicken. It smells, it looks, and I think it's gonna taste incredible. Cheers. 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 Looks, looks juicy. Mm. Oh, that tastes incredible. That is a really rich tomatoey sauce. Really good. And do you know what? Part of me would expect that to taste quite similar to some of the other things that we've tasted, but it tastes completely different. And therefore, as a package, you get so much variety in all the different dishes, <laughs> but, but it's all just absolutely stunning. <laughs> Nearly there, string hoppers. These get steamed on a plate, covered with a bowl, in a microwave for 90 seconds. And I'm serving it with carrot and coriander sambal, which has been tossed in a fish dressing and a side of pole sambal. Whew. I'm not even gonna serve this one up now, I'm just gonna eat it myself. <laughs> um, this is fantastic because it is lighter. It's a completely different flavor profile because of the fermented fishiness. It's nice and light and just quite well kneaded off the back of so many meaty, oily dishes. Well, I eat this. Dish number nine. This is choco cocoa biscuit pudding. I'm not even gonna decant it for you. Silky smooth layers of coconut chocolate layered with soaked Marie biscuits and topped with salted cashews. Cheers. Not at all. Y you go for it. I'm so full, there is so much food. <laughs> what a way to end a spectacular meal. Mike. Well done. Thanks. It, it was genuinely, genuinely an enjoyable experience. I had a lot of fun and I've eaten things that I've never had before. How much do you think you'd spend on this recipe kit? I wouldn't be surprised if total this wasn't a hundred pounds plus. 75 pounds. That is exceptional. If you're going to do it as a one-off and you're going to get three other people involved and you're all going to cook it together. What a great way to spend an evening. They also do other kits at different price ranges with fewer dishes. So you can pick and choose what you'd like to spend and what dishes you'd like to have. Thank you, because that was no, genuinely a lot of fun. Well, I hope you still got room for shawarma. Always oh. got room. What are you doing? Just checking yourself <laughs> out. I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> Baff, how are you feeling? Oh, amazing, and I can't wait to <laughs> dig into it. Next up, the dough has finished resting for its 30 minutes. Now to cut it into four portions. Take each portion and get 85 gram balls out of that portion. Then let those rest for 10 minutes before rolling into our flatbreads and cooking in our frying pan for two to three minutes on each side. You know what we can do? What? We can chop some short rib. Yes. Nice, nice, nice. Oh, it doesn't need this knife. This knife is overkill. That looks amazing. I, don't, I wasn't hungry, but now that it's doing that, I need it. <laughs> yeah. Now it's time to construct flatbreads, lettuce, beef in the middle, garlic mayonnaise, pickled onions, crispy onions, coriander, little lashing of chili on top. And that is the flank beef short rib shawarma. Superb work. Cheers. Yeah, cheers. cheers. Oh.
Oh. It's going to be a good year, people. It's that takes me year. to a good place. That is so tender. And that glaze has a really lovely sweet spiciness to it. Well, it's delicious. It completely delivers on that. How do you rate the kit? Everything was really easy to do. The only thing this really needed was time for the beef to cook. What I love about this one in particular, and, and my one, were that you get a huge sense of achievement when you bring everything to the table. It's so impressive and you think, wow, I made that. But you're within that wonderful, tight security of the kit and all the prep itself so that you can't really go wrong. I made that, but I didn't have that much room to screw it up. Yeah, that's exactly what I look for yeah. in the kits as well. Brilliant. What would you like to guess how much it was? I reckon you'd pay £10 each in the restaurant for the shawarma. So, £40. £39. Really? Yeah. So you're happy with that? Yeah, I am happy with that. If you get in the mindset of I'm going out for dinner or I'm putting on an event for friends and family, you can justify that price. It's a special occasion, isn't it? Exactly. And so, for, yeah, 39 quid for that experience, for that quality of beef, I'm happy with that. So over to you guys, which were your favourite meal kits and why? You can see how much we enjoyed exploring and tasting new flavours and new kits. Why don't you have a look for some in your local area, get hold of them, support some local restaurants and send us photos so that we can see what you've made. Mike, how many writers have you eaten in your time? Uh, quite a few. Mm. How many have had triangles of cucumber in them? None. <laughs> it's going in a wrap that you're not going to see, is it? Doesn't matter. Look what you're doing to me! You're doing this to yourself. No, I had started off with confidence and having you at the sidelines makes me doubt myself. <laughs> if it wasn't for you, I'd be a pro chef by now. <laughs>